there is a software that you can use that, that might fix it called Advanced Turbo Flasher. Is it safe to Google Advanced Turbo Flasher? It is. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. It tastes so good when it hits your lips. Mm. <laughs> This is Tim Vine, and this is a download from the BBC. For more information and our terms of use, visit www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio Scotland. Hey, and a ho, 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 digital downloaders. I'm James Christie. Christmas has come early for you lucky listeners in the shape of this perfectly wrapped audio gift. Coming up, we've got our annual visit from a jolly fat man, Ian Hislop, Harry Hill is dropping down our virtual chimney. I mean, I don't keep in touch with the badges in the way that I used to. <laughs> <laughs> Greg McHugh and Des Clark reminded us just what Christmas is all about. Commerce. By ruthlessly plugging their panto. Ah, oh, thank goodness they've gone. <laughs> How many more of these blooming panto people are we to suffer in the run-up to Christmas? <laughs> but first, what was this all about? It tastes so good when it hits your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> That was BBC Radio Scotland's TV reviewer Graham Virtue sampling some of her hot gin cocktails. Yeah, and, and are you enjoying your gin? I, I am absolutely <laughs> loving this hot gin cocktail. I had, I, th- I thought I'd caught a sniffle, and this <laughs> is uh, this is just the job. You know, I'm actually finished this one. You've but, drained you know. that. Would you like mine? <laughs> You know, I'll, mine I'll, as I'll well. accept yours because Scott will need to take the the Dean TV. Yeah, these are great glasses yeah. as well. Graham Virtue. Yeah. Down in one. Let's, let's see how this uh, let's Graham, see how this TV guide goes. Graham the Drain Virtue. Yeah. That was his nickname. Mm. There it goes. Ah. Oh, it tastes so good when it hits your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Tell us who's been on sure. the telly and yeah. all that. <laughs> um, yeah, c- c- cooking can pro- cooking programs. We're all getting uh-huh. geared up. We, it's a good idea to get your at least get your shopping done. The referendum is long gone. The general election is ages away. So the powers that be at BBC Scotland have decided even total dafties like Fred McCauley and Ian Hislop are now allowed to talk about politics. The latest uh, prediction that I I think I believe for the, for the the general election next year is that we're going to end up with a an SNP UKIP coalition. Uh-huh with Farage possibly as Deputy Prime Minister and Alex as Prime Minister as the whole of Britain. <laughs> does, does that sound good? Ian, nothing no nothing is impossible in politics, as you must know of all the years you've been there. Um, and, and certainly not now. Just uh-huh. about anything could happen. Yeah. Um, I, I did news quiz last week, Ian, and uh, Mr Clegg, uh, absent from the autumn statement, <laughs> said... That he his spokesman said he wanted to spend less time in the House of Commons, and I was saying, which is something that the electorate will help him with. <laughs> come me, that can be arranged. <laughs> if I thought I would have, I would have should have sent you that for. Have I got news for you? Yeah, but, well, um, I'll nick it. For, Don't worry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which I continue to enjoy as everybody else does, and I am looking forward immensely to this week's. Yes, well, it it should be and a the, funny the, week. The listeners might not know why. But um, the guest, unless there has been a last-minute change, Ms Kirsty Wark. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's, Go on. No, no. <laughs> a very excitable friend there. Yeah. She's a pal, and I know for a fact that the producers have been trying to get Kirsty on for a number of years. And she said, <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't do that. I would just <laughs> let my voice run away with itself. Oh, is that uh-huh. what she said? She said, I wouldn't be able to bite my lip. So, Ian, you could be in for a spectacular night. <laughs> well, I, I, I Probe hope her. so. Probe um, her. And uh, if, with any luck, she'll feel sufficiently comfortable uh-huh. that that whole BBC straitjacket will start to undo. Yes. <laughs> Do you know the secret to that straitjacket, Ian? No. White wine. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what we were talking about on this Tuesday's Macaulay and Co. What did you not get when you were a youngster, folks? What did you want for your Christmas? And Santa didn't deliver. And here's another question. Why does Fred keep calling me Amy? Oh, I'll tell you another one, Amy. Uh, when I was in my teens and I worked in a wee cafe in Perth, mm-hmm. in Princess Street, Dino's Cafe, I was the sandwich boy, and I wanted an air rifle. <laughs> right? <laughs> Seriously, I wanted an air rifle. And I saw my dad walking down and he walked past and I could see he had a bag over his shoulder and it, this thing sticking out of the bag. And I thought, yeah, Dancer, he's nailed it. 
uh, and I got home so excited and discovered he'd bought a curtain rail. <laughs> So I'm pleased to say I didn't get for my Christmas. You imagine that? What have you got me? <gasps> and remember, it's your birthday soon, so who knows? Fingers crossed, you could be getting curtains. I'm 79 now, and I still have have the, a pout about Christmas. But I was when I was young, I wanted a bicycle yeah. and roller skates, as my brothers had. But I was never allowed them because seemingly as a toddler I'd had meningitis right. and it affected my middle ears, so my balance wasn't good. And oh, I harped on and harped on. Eventually my mum got me a pair of roller skates, but I was only allowed one skate. One roller <laughs> skate? <Okay. laughs> one skate. I felt so deprived, Fred. Still to come, we've got Harry Hill, Craig Hill, they're not related, and Fred McCauley exposed for defrauding a charity. You won't want to miss that. But first, it's panto season, so here's the stars of Peter Pan, Greg McHugh and Des Clark. You've got us at the start of the run, that's yes, the main thing. Yeah. We should really do a before and after interview. <laughs> <laughs> I love panto, I can't get another panto. <laughs> Fast forward, length of January. <laughs> see if I see another. <laughs> well, this is Greg's first one, and uh-huh. you already think there's about eight weeks gone in the run. Uh, I've been I've been rehearsing and doing this show for over a year now. <laughs> I think, uh, no, it's good, it's great at the moment, but you're right, I think if I was to come in the end of the run, I might be just crying. So this year at the King's Theatre, it is, of course, Peter Pan. Yep. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> and we, we're in it, yep. Talk us through the characters and who's playing them. Uh, I am the I'm Starkey the pirate. I don't remember Starkey the pirate. He's somewhere in the book. Pan. He's uh-huh. somewhere in the book. Uh-huh. And Greg, you're Smee. I am Smee Hook's uh, sidekick. S- sidekick, slightly uh, idiotic sidekick. Uh-huh. Scott Fletcher's Peter Pan. Uh, and who's Hook today? Uh, hook, hook today. We've had a couple, of, <laughs> a couple of changes to the bill, uh, but we're now with Alex Bourne, who's coming to Alex play. Alex Bourne. Yes, from the. Tell Bourne. me more about his identity. Well, he, do you know what? He is a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a superstar, really, because he came in at very late notice, forty-eight uh-huh. hours notice. Right. Um, yeah, he's that's done, not usual in Panto. No, he had an illness. Well, he did, well, he's done. We will rock you and things in the West End for years. Yeah. So he's far too overqualified to work with us. Right. <laughs> um, but yes, we had. Uh, well, Gavin Mitchell's was originally meant to be doing it, but ah, um, uh, a great baddie yeah. cracked his ribs because uh, he was laughing so hard gag, uh-huh. at the script <laughs> that he had to go. No, he did. Well, <laughs> if you read the story, he cracked his ribs before. I didn't. St- still game. Did he? And he did that whole run, oh. obviously, with uh-huh. the cracked ribs and the illness yeah. and all that as well. Um, and he managed to get through that run, then came to us, Jeez. still not quite 100%. Right. And it's quite a physical show, there's sort of jumping about, you know, panto. Whereas, is, I mean, still game, he was just posting it in, wasn't exactly, he? Ah, exactly, I know. That's, that's what we're trying to say. Lifting, yeah. a, lifting a pint glass is not exactly the same as uh, <laughs> sword know, fights and a two hour sword <laughs> fight. <laughs> Definitely. Exactly. No. So, you know, he tried, he did right. rehearse, but then he found that he physically couldn't do it. Yeah, yep. well, soon, Gav. Yep. And then somebody stepped in and now they've gone. Warren Brown stepped in, now he's gone, yep. and now we've got Alex Bourne. Right. So, so that's um, it. Are you taking bets on how long he's going to last? <laughs> well, I, 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 just, I just hope Des doesn't sack anyone else, because that's the real story. That's I, what, that's that really is a happened. lie. It's, it's Greg McHugh's first year in Panto, <laughs> and three people have left. Is he now the impresario? Is it, is it Des Clark Presents? <laughs> uh, I wish it the was. The King's Theatre. <laughs> how many, many have you many have you done now, Des? Uh, it seems like I've done more, but this is only three for me. Is that right? Yeah, it's only three, so um, but I'm now a veteran. It uh-huh. seems like the way it's going, yeah. but I love it, you know. And, and you're right about it. it's just a big demand, and it's it's weeks of performance. Uh-huh. It's two or three a day, but when you get that buzz out of the audience, it does lift you for about five seconds. And the audience <laughs> <laughs> audiences will be very different. I mean, you'll have you'll have ones that are just full of school kids that are just well high on Harry Bo. <laughs> yeah, and also what I love is when we get the. Uh, the slightly older audience, Aye. the more mature, the silver deal pensioners that come in. What's that? Formaldehyde. <laughs> <laughs> it's lavender and love. Lavender. That's what lavender and love. But again, that's the, one of your other plays, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> we get them. And do you know what though? They all enjoy it, but in different ways, uh-huh. and, and they'll laugh and react to different things. That's right. Yes. I mean, for some people, they're enjoying it because they're warm and dry. <laughs> <laughs> Were you at the show last <laughs> day? <Is> that, <laughs> Not yet, but I'm, I'm going to go. And my mistake last year was we left it very late to go and we did something that's really unusual Greg you'll be floored by this Alien and I 
bought tickets. What? No. This cannot be what? the case. Dun, dun, dun. Does a baker buy bread? <laughs> <laughs> Macaulay bought uh-huh. tickets or something. We were, but sadly, we were only four rows from the front. <laughs> and there was a bit with super soakers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said to Elaine, it's all right, they haven't noticed us. Oh, they had. <laughs> Des Clark. <laughs> Candom Bar yeah. and others drenched us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. How unfair. It was just unfortunate where you were sat was just where the lighting was <laughs> and, and also that several people had pointed out, you know Fred McCauley's in? <laughs> Do He's I know Fred McCauley's in? He'll love being soaked. <laughs> but, um, but no, it was good and you seemed to enjoy it well, as well. you know, and I tried to be discreet. I mean, I only stood up and waved at the audience behind me several times. <laughs> 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 Look at me! I'm in the business as well! I haven't been doing this, but I'm busy! <laughs> Busy. <laughs> I yacht for hook. I mean, it might happen again. <laughs> Please don't joke. Yeah. Please don't joke. It, it could be you. It could uh, be you. But uh, no, it's. Uh, but it has been a good laugh. I don't know. It's different, I guess, for you, Greg. First time. Uh, but um, I've absolutely loved it. Yeah. I mean, it's been a bit of an odd uh, <laughs> rehearsal period, <laughs> losing seventeen cast uh-huh. members in there. Yeah. But no, now we now that we've settled and Alex has come in, it's uh, yeah. it's a really good yeah. laugh. Well, well, also, I heard Alex just got in ahead of Abu Hamza. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what's your qualifications, Mister Hamza? Are you telling yeah. me though that Hang on. you're being extradited to Bath Street? <laughs> so, can you imagine the boo though when he came on? I mean, that, that, would, that would be on well, another level. Part of his name has the word boo in it, so he's Taylor Mayfield. <laughs> is That's there a yeah. night uh, when all the people that are in Panthers are in and around Glasgow get together? There should be no, out. We do come to see each other's panto uh-huh. at some point, um, but I don't know I that there's no a... intention of seeing anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that quite honestly. <laughs> On your night off, the last well, thing yes, you want to do. I, I need to thank you formally for for coming in uh, because you must be. Ex- it is exhausting. It's You'd tiring. be wanting a long lie. You you're not doing that. Tell me you're not doing your radio show in the morning. Yeah, still still doing it, Capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I, I know. Ju- I don't know. I, I, I physically just, don't know how you can do that. I have a really big tax bill in January. Oh, yeah, right. I've told you that. Congratulations. In the yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What a year you've had. Oh, it's yeah. been great. Uh-huh. The so, sympathy out there is uh-huh. just non-existent <laughs> at the moment. And that tax bill is for the previous year. Yeah, I know. Right? So you still got 2014. Yep. yep. So Imagine Des, what's going to happen. Des will be there in 2014, 15. <laughs> what about you, Greg? Uh, till 2020 at the moment, I think. Yeah. I like to say. <laughs> right, we've got the random Christmas question generator. Oh. Um, pick a number between 1 and 22, is it? 21. 1 and 21. Des, you go first. I'll go for number 17. Mm-mm-mm. Brussels sprouts, yay or nay? I'll just do a wee chart here, Des. Greg. Brussels sprouts, yes or no? Yes. Yes yeah. for Des. Yeah. Uh, no for me. There they are. Yeah. One yes, one no. That's it. Forty-five, fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, can I please have number eleven, please? Number eleven. <laughs> thank you. Lovely. Best Christmas song. Oh, best Christmas song. Uh, it's it's got to be Fairy Tale New York, surely. F T N Y. Didn't know where you were going after that. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to agree with you, but I mean that's probably. Yeah, I like that one. Like yeah, so yeah. that's two FTNYs. So that, that's for two people that don't like Hogmanay. <laughs> next, quick, <laughs> next number, please. <laughs> I'll go for number nine. <laughs> Describe your perfect Christmas morning. Oh, perfect Christmas morning. Days. Oh, it would be listening to Macaulay and Co. <laughs> wow. We're not live this year. It would be not listening to Macaulay and Co. <laughs> Are you not live? I'm not live, oh, Des. I remember you used to do it live. I know, I've done mm. it many, many years. Yeah. It was great, because when the kids were wee, you know, you'd get up in the morning, open your presents, have your breakfast, and it was eight. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> we were looking for something to do. <laughs> so, oh. I mean, a Christmas, perfect Christmas morning must be a, getting I'll, up about 2 p.m. Yeah, for you, it's so. about a lie. Well, because I've done it live uh-huh. for a few years oh, on right. the radio, but not this time around. Right. Um, my dad makes a great fried breakfast. Oh, nice. So I, I think that sets you up for the day because, you know, you've got that early doors, then you've got a few hours before the, the Christmas dinner. So that's what it would be, just lots of food. That's right. pretty much it, yeah. Love eating. And chocolate buckets of Maltesers. 
Oh. Anything like that. See, I also say Christmas with food. I love my usual, please. A bucket of all teas in my fryer. <laughs> <laughs> the classic yeah. Christmas morning. Just isn't it? put the doctor in order. <laughs> yeah, and they wonder why Change there's so many. GP. F- yeah, right. so many <laughs> but globs of fat going down drains <laughs> in Scotland. Uh, bucket of Maltesers? Uh, aye, bucket of Maltesers mixed in with some KFC. That's uh-huh. what I would have. Uh, uh-huh. uh, perfect uh, Christmas morning would be, yeah, I like a lion, so it's uh, like getting up about. 11 and uh-huh, then 11. maybe a wee glass of something glass bubbly. bubbly and depending what's happened the night before maybe some orange juice in that glass of bubbly and maybe not <laughs> and tears. Oh, right. yeah. at no point did he say seeing the delighted smile on the face of my beloved when she <laughs> opens the present that I thought, <laughs> thought so long and hard about buying her excellent that was that was, that was just about to come wasn't that was it? just about to come <laughs> after Maltesers <laughs> after a fry up after champagne yeah one more number please Greg uh, uh, 15. 15. The Queen's Your speech. Your most memorable <laughs> present. <laughs> most memorable <laughs> present. The Queen's speech. Uh, most memorable present uh, would have to be a thousand-piece jigsaw that my gran sent to me, and there was a delay, and I was so excited to go to the post office um, after primary school in Morningside, uh-huh. and I turned up and I was furious. Uh, so that's probably the most memorable. <laughs> you were, why? Because Cause I was so excited because there'd been a delay, but I had an extra present after Christmas. Oh, right. Yeah. And we went to pick it up, and it was uh, a thousand piece jigsaw, and I was gone. Oh, right. Oh, I see. No. Right. Do you know what I mean? When you think it's going to be something exciting uh-huh. after Christmas, and it wasn't, it was a, a thousand piece jigsaw. I, mm. but, uh, Did you ever tell her? <laughs> uh, no, I, no, I didn't. No, and I mean, which... in Morningside, you would have had to write a thank you letter. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we, we were spared that. Des and I were working class. We didn't have to do thank you letters. That that's... was for the posh kids. Yeah, that's right. Have and you then... done your thank you letter? Yeah. The what? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, and I tell you what, a thousand in callig- uh, calligraphy is quite. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've got to get it right on the page. Are you really sure? Do. It was a thousand beast jigsaw, not just a picture that the postal service had mishandled. <laughs> oh, actually, hold on, it was. It was. A, it was a watercolor. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, probably worth a fortune. Yeah, Des, your most memorable present. Without a doubt, I got a six-foot snooker table when I was growing up, and you you've played wow. pool with me as well. I uh-huh. love pool and snooker, and that was just the best present I've ever had. Oh, tremendous. To this day. Uh-huh. And I tell my girlfriend that yeah. she's never topped that, what my parents bought me as a kid. Love snooker, and I got that table. It was great. All right. Thank you very much, boys. Do you want to stick around for uh, a parsnip? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Do you want the, to... Peter yeah, Pan got, is on the king. Oh, we've oh, got no. a show. Have you got to go? I think um, we've got to go. Great rehearsal. I think uh, I've... Actually, I think you're, you're good to go. It's 28 minutes past. We've filled enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's always feeling it's special right. on this show. I'm just filling for a parsnip. <clears throat> That's it. Can you over? grab one on the way out, guys? It's such a pleasure to see you, and I will be in. Oh, thanks. Uh, I can't make the press night, which is the 11th. Yep, it's but you're not going to have to buy tickets again. Are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm. I think I might be speaking out of time. I think I might be phoned them up and said, "Listen, we weren't able to come to the press night. Can we come on the?" 4th of January. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you cheap git. Yeah. <laughs> but great to see you, and I hope it all goes well to you, to the people that are playing Thank Wendy, you. to all the people that are going to be hook. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the audience, <laughs> wear thick makeup, you never know. <laughs> you could be on stage. Could be your time, yep, why not? Brian Burnett, every night of the week from 10 past 6. Oh, thank goodness they've gone. <laughs> How many more of these blooming panto people are we to suffer in the run up to Christmas? <laughs> I hope they can still hear me. I'm joking, of course. That was quite a great pair they are, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that was If that good. doesn't make you want to go and see panto, I don't, I don't know what. Next up, it's nearly Harry Hill. It's Harry pretending to be a puppet called Gary while being probed by Fred McCauley on his contract negotiations. Just listen to the clip. It will make sense. There have been rumours that Harry could be on the verge of signing a big contract with BBC One. Um, are those true? It's the first thing I've heard about it. <laughs> you, Gary, could you mind? Thank you. Um, really? Where was that? Where, where oh, did you read that? In the Sunday. In the it was sun, in a Sunday in, newspaper. Yeah, when, does, when does the money come through? The mirror. Hmm? <laughs> when does it what? When does the money come through? <laughs> You better keep this quiet on my wife. Normally, when she reads this sort of thing in the paper, she goes out and buys herself a coat. All right. Okay. <laughs> Still to come, Fred exposed for extorting money from a charity. What a rat! But before that, here's Richard Gordon, Craig Hill, and Lloyd Langford with the five things we learnt this week. Well, 
leather bombshell. Yes. Ooh, what could this possibly <laughs> yes, be about? Yes, quite the opposite <laughs> of a bombshell. Actually, I mean, I love the idea. Scotland in Scotland sometimes has bad weather at this time of year. Shock. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it is really funny. Then everything's been reported. It's funny, isn't it, when the weather goes, uh, you know, bad or a little bit cold or freezing or windy, like how it's reported as if it's the first time it's ever happened. And it's quite exciting, actually. In 144 mile per hour uh, winds, I think, up in, where was it again? Was it St Kilda? Up in St Kilda yeah. Islands. I mean, at least that brings a wee bit of excitement. Excitement, you know, if you're in the islands, I think that'd be quite fun. Yeah. But well, I mean, um, it hasn't been fun for the 28,000 homes that were without power. And, yes, and I read that too. Yeah, I didn't so, I mean, realise. No. That's. I thought that was a real shame. God love them. And in Aberdeen, one of my favourite things was the. There was a bit of a story from Aberdeen. It said the, in Aberdeen, 20 vehicles got stuck in icy conditions. A gritter was sent, and vehicles were later freed. That's the story. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, it hasn't really... I mean, it was a little bit cold. There were some hailstones in Glasgow. I'm looking out, and it's an absolutely gorgeous... Oh, it was shocking it was just, yesterday. Yeah. I went to buy a Christmas tree yesterday and nearly got... We, we actually stopped buying it because we couldn't put it on the car because it was too dangerous. It was actually too dodgy. Gosh. Yeah, it's difficult well, to well, try and... Well, uh, you know, if that's the worst that befalls you this Christmas, then... You're yeah, it's not awful. <laughs> My favourite thing is the Met Office. Um, they have this amber warning, which yes. means be prepared. Be prepared. So put your jacket on. Basically, <laughs> and uh, and then they have it. Then it was downgraded to a yellow warning, which means be aware, <laughs> look out the windy. <laughs> what does that mean? You know, be aware there there is weather outside. So yeah, um, we're all up in arms yeah. because it's uh, the weather's dodgy. But apparently, it is um, it's going to be one of the most severe uh, winters ever. And the thing the thing that I'm loving is this new expression, which I've never heard before. Apparently, when a storm intensifies as the pressure at its centre drops rapidly, that would normally be known as an explosive cyclogen. Genesis, which <laughs> does sound like a revelation before Christmas. Uh, but it's actually known, I love this, colloquially as a weather bomb. By who? <laughs> well, by all of us now. I know, I've never heard that. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm quite liking that. It's quite a cool term. A wee weather bomb. That's what's happening right now. That's the story. Lloyd, any thoughts on, on that? It's just such emotive language. It's sort yes. of unnecessary. It's like weather bomb. You know, well, we've got like jihadi clouds. <laughs> yeah. Hail Hitler. I mean, it's just... Oh. <laughs> And it happens every year. That's the thing. I mean, I agree with Craig. It happens every year. You have people who've bought houses next to rivers this time of year saying, oh, my my house has been flooded. And it's like, well, yeah, but in the summer, when you get to swim in the river, you're not complaining then, are you? So you might just want to cling film everything on the ground floor. I know. We kind of just half expect it, though, don't we? Like, you know, let's just close our eyes and imagine what winter's like. But I hope it gets really, really snowy. I think everybody secretly wants that, well, but it I, yeah. very rarely happens on Christmas Day. Um, looking, it? looking across the camps, there's certainly snow in the hills across there. So, oh, the um, camps is that's one of my favourite views. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope there's more to come. Right, Lloyd, we've got headline number two, and it's for you. SN, please vote for me. <laughs> SN, please vote for me. This is. Uh, I love the fact that they give the uh, the story about the um, Alex Salmond to the Welsh comedian. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Scot- Scottish comedians won't talk about Alex Salmond. He's like Candyman, I think. If, if, if you say his name three times, they're worried he's going to appear. <laughs> it's much more fun hearing you guess. <laughs> <laughs> he's um he's announced his plans to uh, stand as a member of Parliament for Westminster. Yes, yes. I kind of I kind of like the idea of him being an MP in Westminster because I think anything that winds up David Cameron is good in my books. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, he has been in the past, of course, and, and he was very good at um, winding up the politicians down. So do you think it's just a bit of devilment from his point of view then? Well, the thing about him being an MP in the past as well is that when he left in 2010, he got given a £65,000 golden goodbye. <laughs> uh, he donated half of it to charity and he, I think he kept the other half. So... People are saying if he's going to come back, he should maybe give the money back. I think. I mean, apparently he's he's ruled out taking a seat in the House of Lords. I want him to rule that back in. How much more fun would that be to hear Scottish voice going, "Oh, Waggy"? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I'd just love someone Scottish and ballsy there to you know to wind it up a wee bit. I think that could be quite fun. <laughs> right. Look, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with um, this next story. So, Craig, for you, the third headline. <laughs> At the end, oh, that's turn just... it. <laughs> oh, that you've got to spoil. I know. Just play moments. it again. Play it again. Okay, yeah, right, play it again. Can we? Can we? Oh, we'll just we'll, okay, okay, right. Here we go. Right. Any room at the end, turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. The 
there you are. Silly. Yes, this was a very interesting survey. I mean, most times you read these surveys and you don't know, you know who they've been talking to or where they come from, but I don't care. This one's hysterical. <laughs> they've um, interviewed children, I think, between 5 yeah. and 12, asking them about their knowledge of Christmas, and my goodness, it's entertaining. Uh, first of all, you wouldn't even believe this. Most, I love this, one in five kids uh, believe Jesus is a man who plays for Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please tell me that's true. It was multiple choice. They did, yeah, they did I, have. I, I have to say, that threw me initially. I thought, why on earth would you come up with that? That's but what yeah, I thought. Yeah. I thought that was strange. But they asked them, is Jesus, they asked children in a shopping centre in Brent Cross, a thousand children as well, um, who is Jesus Christ? Is he A, a footballer for Chelsea, B, the son of God, C, TV presenter, uh, D, an X Factor contestant, <laughs> which I'd love to hear that, Jesus Christ, <laughs> um, or an astronaut. And, mo- and do you know what? One in five of them said that Jesus was this was a footballer for Chelsea, which is quite believable, actually, when you think about it. Uh, yeah, it's, you would have <laughs> thought the name might have just permeated. I know, but I, I've something. got Spanish friends called Jesus as well, uh, so do you know those kids are clever. That's a, that could be a Spanish footballer playing for Chelsea. And my other favourite thing was this is I mean these this story is just too good to be true. A quarter of te- kids who are mad about technical things, modern kids think the shepherds found the infant Jesus in his mangers thanks to Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm no, I'm no joking. I am going to go home and I'm going to get to Google and type in manger. I want to type in manger and see what comes up. Um, yeah. And my other favourite fact is one in four kids think well they th- they think the virgin birth took place in church, yes. but one in ten think that Rudolph was there. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Never mind little donkey. Who's that? What's that thing with the big red nose? Well, that was how the three wise men found the manger, of course. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. It wasn't a star. It was the, it was the red nose of um, Rudolph. But isn't that so sweet? Oh, and the other thing is a lot of the kids think um, Christmas Day is Santa Claus's birthday. <laughs> so he must be like two million years old or something. But that's really sweet. It's a li- really sweet story. But yeah, somebody needs to get out there and uh, put the nativity back on, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> Lloyd, I'm assuming that this probably had you um, thinking <laughs> in all sorts of random It's d- one of those, it's one of those um, stupid stories that you get this time every year. I mean, the thing that they haven't really said is that um, how do we know that the children weren't just messing about? Uh-huh. You yeah, know, like yeah. the, you're you've been asked you're in a shopping centre and you get asked this stupid survey. It's like people are just I think people are just messing about saying, Oh, you know, Joseph met Mary on Tinder and uh, the three <laughs> kings got their gifts on a three for two offer of boots. <laughs> it's just I think it's a chance to, to um plug these various That never occurred to me, Lloyd. I like that mm. idea the kids are just being a wee bit wide. Yeah, I think yeah. they're just they're, you know, they're probably with their friends. They don't wanna appear to know all the answers, so they're just fooling. Yeah, the other thing they answered was uh, one in ten reckon the three kings brought <laughs> gifts of a wand, a tiara, and wings. <laughs> the three kings? I didn't think so. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it is brilliant. I, I must admit, like you, Craig, I, I, I'm not cynical. I just thought these kids were, um, were, were... You just imagine them honestly answering oh, this, I just think this questionnaire. As long as it answers. ends up being entertaining. Um, Do you know, apparently they're not doing nativities anymore. Yeah, anyway. Well, I was going to ask you about that. The, the, I gather that punk fairies are now featuring large in, in the more modern... Nativities. Oh, we've all been there. Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently they. they actually, yeah, apparently they, uh, you're more likely enough. Apparently they do musicals now instead of um, about one of them. Apparently they don't do as many nativities. There's a lot no. of them starting to do musicals. <laughs> yeah, the Christmas classic Annie, get your gun. <laughs> uh, but no, they're, they're doing lots of. Uh, they, I suppose you could do Jesus Christ Superstar. That would kind of sum it all up as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, but they, um, wearing a Chelsea strip. Yeah, but they, um, yeah, apparently they do. They have punk fairies. They have footballers. One in eight will have uh, no religious references, but Mary and Joseph will be dumped in favour of eco warriors, <laughs> aliens, or Elvis. Elvis, <laughs> the, the most Christmassy of figures. I really want to see that show. <laughs> Elvis has left the manger. Oh, are not. <laughs> <laughs> right, nothing to do with Scottish politics this time, but it is to do with. I think this is the story about um, a uh, an employee employee of Korean Air. Yeah, and um, she was on the plane. I think it was taxiing at JFK, and uh, one of the air stewards uh, served her some nuts uh, the wrong way. Uh, when I say that, I mean they they <laughs> they gave. <laughs> They gave them to her in a bag rather than sort of fr- try to throw them into her mouth. Uh, and um, 
she was uh, she was uh, furious. She was apoplectic um, because apparently uh, in first class on on Korean Air you, you're supposed to get your nuts on a plate, <laughs> um, and so she uh, she ordered the um, steward off the plane, yes. and um, she made a massive uh, fuss about it, and um, and then there's been a, 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 a huge backlash in in Korea about this uh, lady, and uh, she's just had to. I think she's had to resign from yeah. her job. And part of it, I think, yeah, Hyun Ah. She was, she's the daughter of the chairman of the company. Um, she's quit as executive vice president of cabin service. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just kind of, yeah, I think she showed that she probably shouldn't have been doing that. Imagine but, sacking somebody for that. So Yeah, so it was macadamia nuts, and in first class you're supposed to be given a plate with I mean, these that, macadamia nuts that, that, rather than the wee... Uh, to be fair... You know, in first class, you, you yeah, really don't ex- want that embarrassment of trying to rip open that wee bag because it's a flipping nightmare. I think for that price, I'd expect somebody to put each individual nut into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but who, who wants nuts on a plate? I mean, they, huh? they roll and they slide. At the very least, yeah. you want a shallow bowl. It's quite you know. surprising that in first class, you'd just be getting nuts. <laughs> it's a bit rubbish, <laughs> isn't it? Well, you would imagine there's more to come. Yeah, I would, I would imagine, but I'll, but yeah, it does show somebody, you know, with a slightly um, nippy little temper, doesn't it? Yes. Actually, telling the stewardess to get off the get plane the because plane. she serves somebody nuts like in a bag instead of a plate. I think <laughs> if you were the stewardess and you were being fired, then you'd have to leave the plane in style and engage that uh, bouncy castle slide <laughs> yes. and, uh, yeah. and keep your high heels on as well. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Right, look, let, let's get to the one final headline, please. Baking nine to five. Baking nine to five. This Break is it. just this is just this too is good to be random. true. This yeah. is just lovely. I mean, I, I uh, didn't really know this story before, so anyone listening will just love it. Uh, well, basically, Cleethorpe's <laughs> Rotary Club. There you are. That, things you never hear. Uh, they want, thought they'd write to Dolly Parton to ex- ask her if she'd like to become a member, and she wrote back and said yes. <laughs> Isn't that absolutely amazing? And uh, she does lots of work uh, for charity, and it's, yeah. it's one of the first um, charity things that she's done outside of the US. So it's quite a big deal. And they, they, they kind of wrote, I think she's got a children's library. Yeah, in, she's, uh, she's involved in that in Cleethorpe. Yeah, yeah, which I think is called something like the, the Imagination Libraries. And uh, yeah, and she does these books, which is great. She gives, um, she gives children at nursery a free book every month until they're five. So I think give them war and peace and, you know, just go for it. Let them start at the high end. Uh, but, yeah, so I thought that was an amazing story. They, they actually wrote to her and just said, would you like to become an honorary member? And she actually said yes. So they're now hoping that she's going to um, come and visit Cleethorpe. But I can't see that happening. <laughs> I mean, what, I just thought... No, but they'll all be getting excited, won't they? Do you know, like, the British Legion in, like, Hull will be writing to Angelina Jolly or something. <laughs> so, yeah, it's quite nice. It shows you, though, doesn't it, that Dolly is as um, down-to-earth as we all thought she was. Yeah, there was a great quote from former club president, Rolf Spare, he said, the members were surprised when Miss Barton agreed no to half. join. <laughs> but good on them for, for, you know, for sending their email, because a lot of people would have just dismissed yeah. it and thought she'd never do it. So, But yeah, I mean, just, just nobody doesn't love a bit of Dolly. Well, exactly. And, and everyone, Lloyd, will be looking to join up the uh, Rotary Club in Cleethorpe's now. Well, I think it's surprising. I know for a fact that uh, Olivia Newton-John is the president of the Isle of Man Basking Shark Society. <laughs> I think if you send a <laughs> wacky enough letter to these celebrities, then they'll agree to... Join it. I mean, they don't. They haven't. They haven't got any commitment. Like, it's not as if Dolly has to turn up and rearrange the books or anything, <laughs> or hand out late fines. Yeah, they just have allowed to say that they're attached to Dolly. It's just lovely. <laughs> I thought that was it's a just, I mean, it's, I just think it's utterly, utterly bizarre. I think um, Kenny Rogers is furious that he hasn't <laughs> got an invite. <laughs> well, as they said in the in the wee sting at the beginning, she doesn't have to work very often. Do you know when she's over there working for Cleethorpe? It's only from nine till five, and then she can relax. <laughs> I've had two instances, uh, one during the Commonwealth Games, but one over a year ago, where somebody <laughs> maliciously put up that I was using a charity's funds to have a hair transplant. <laughs> <laughs> that, that hasn't worked. No. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs>